Hey y'all, it's Rachel. I um, am actually on my weekly grocery shopping run and I thought I'll take a minute and make a video to go with this post about boundaries and limits because it's such a big thing. Something really big that I'm working through and that I know so many of you are and I get lots of questions about it. So I'm doing a video. So for example, I know by Fridays, I'm like over it, it's over, I'm, I'm done. I'm like, no, nothing, nothing can be extra on Friday or I'm gonna be extra whatever. So uh, so I've been thinking through for me what, like what might be a Friday morning time where I meet up with other moms and their kids or it might be where I at, you know, see if my mom can watch them for a bit on Friday mornings and by Friday mornings I can go out and do something for myself or, you know, hire a babysitter or whatever, X, Y, Z, do something fun on Friday that'll distract me, you know, and then on the weekend when it's easier. So there's lots of ways. I say this to say, once you realize you have a limit, that's when you get creative because your mind switches from, oh, what's the problem? The problem is I need in this case, time to myself. So now I find a solution. So when you find out what your limit is, you want to put a routine or a habit around it to protect it. So if your limit is, um, you need eight hours of sleep and it, anything less, but you find yourself slipping in your seven, six and a half hours and you're like, I'm going crazy, you know, then you put a routine or a habit around it. Maybe you set an alarm on your phone. Maybe you, it's like a duck behind me. Not a duck, it's just people sign. Yeah, so maybe you set your alarm, or maybe you even turn off your Wi-Fi. You go all big mama parental controls on yourself. Turn off the Wi-Fi at 10, or whatever it might be. Put a habit around it to protect it, because, I mean, you know, and I talked about this before, the country isn't just, or the state doesn't say, here's the law. No, they got policemen, they got a whole judicial system to keep it. So this is what we got to do with our own limits. We got to make routines to keep it. So now, if this is a boundary, and when I say boundary, it's just like a point in which inside you're like, oh, mm, no. Yeah, up to that uh, boundary? No. So this would be with the kids. If you have certain boundaries, I mean, it could, cause it could be anything. It could be, you know, what you allow them to do, uh, what, how you allow them to act at the table, behavior, you know, bedtimes, or any, anything. So, so if you have root, uh, boundaries with the kids, this is where you put rules around them. To protect them so this might be you know no take this might be you might have like fantastic floors or you just hate sandy dirty floors you just grew up I know in a lot of European countries I'm sure here in America but I know when I lived overseas and in Australia it was very common to go to some people's houses and you had to take your shoes off at the door so if that's your boundary if like you just can't stand shoes you, just, you don't have to it doesn't have to be reason if for you that's just that's it they need to take the shoes off the end okay fine Got to make a rule. So you can't just expect your kids to care about your boundaries because this is big. Other people probably don't give a crap about your boundaries. We have to keep our own. We have to keep them. And so we have to hold them. Our kids, they might pick up on it, but if it doesn't serve their momentary short-term interests, they don't care. So you have to make a rule around it and keep it. And part of the rule might be, you know, if you don't, if you do this or, you know, so it might be for chores or something. If you don't do your chore by dinner time, you have to do it before you eat or I don't know. That was just a random one I thought of. It could be anything. Um, but so those go together. That's like one rule. The rule is we do dinner, we do chores by dinner or you have to do them before you eat. So it's like the rule and what happens if you don't all balled into one. This is how you keep boundaries. Now I had a really good question in this conference I was in um, last week, this week, a few days ago. And she said, what do you do if you have different boundaries than your husband? This is a good one because you're probably opposite to your husband. I'm opposite to my husband. It's just how it is. Opposites attract the way I'm with. Um, and so this is probably likely going to happen. And so, uh, you know, I don't know the situation. I don't know what boundaries we're talking about. But I do know that it is very common if the other spouse doesn't share a boundary with you, then they're not as likely to enforce that. Now, we can have this talk about how we should be on the same page and parenting and teamwork, and it's like all true. Of course we should, but the reality is I really care if the house is messy and that the kids haven't cleaned up their rooms. And my husband can go into the same room I go into and be like, looks fine. And I'm like, this room is a mess. And so he's not going to enforce my boundary of what I think is tidy because he doesn't see what is happening as untidy. So I just have realized through much angst and anguish, <laughs> you just can't. You can't expect them to enforce things they don't care about. So now, of course, with the big boundaries, you want to be, you want to be on the same page. 
but with some of the everyday smaller ones, you just might be the only one who cares. And if you care badly enough, then you might have to be the one that enforces it and not your spouse. So, uh, of course, uh, you know, this is, I'm talking about parenting here, not marriage, but I just wanted to throw that in because that's a common thing. You know, I really cared about this. Uh, my husband didn't. What do I do? And so I would just say kids do get used to knowing, like they know, you know, in Sunday school they can do X, Y, Z on, um, you know, with one parent they can do X, Y, Z, whatever the case might be. They start to realize with mom this isn't okay. It's not okay with mom. And you know what? Maybe it is okay with dad if you're not there. It, we can't, um, well, we can't make our husbands do anything, right? We can't make them do anything. So we can... We can share reasons for the boundary. We can create a rule. We can ask them to enforce that with us. Probably my husband often is helpful if I'm really, you know, this has got to happen. Then he's just like, okay, he'll try. Um, and I try to do the same for him for things that don't drive me crazy. But no, if you've made a rule around a boundary that's important to you, it is not uncommon if your husband doesn't rush to keep it because he doesn't share it. Because the truth is, I've talked about this a lot. If it's not a boundary for you, you probably won't keep the rule. Like, even if you make a rule, you're like, the kids can't. I've used this ad nauseum, but I'm going to keep using it because it's just such a clear example. Nobody can eat anything on the couch. You know, when really inside, I just don't want them to eat things that stain. I'm not going to keep that rule. I'm going to seem wishy-washy. You know, I'm going to let them eat something that doesn't stain. And then the next time they get, like, pizza fingers, I'm going to, like, have an actual, a like, conniption screaming fit or something. I guess I'm not going to take it all over wash it and you know I made this rule and then they're like oh yeah but you just like all week we were eating stuff on the couch so you just you don't make a rule that isn't related to what you really like or dislike or value or don't value or hate or whatever because you just won't keep it like human nature you're not going to keep a rule that doesn't closely align with your values or with what keeps you sane or not sane so we want to build I said I was going to have like three points but usually I have like my paper in front of me I'm about to go walking. I have nothing in front of me. I don't even have walking shoes, so I don't know what my three points were. I don't know what my three points were, but I think that the, one of them was if you make habits around your limits, you make rules around your boundaries, and you realize you're going to be the ones that has to enforce them. Oh, oh, I just, I remember now. You, it's not anybody else's job to, quote, respect your boundaries. It's our job to hold them. So it's not, we can't expect anybody to just do what we say if we don't enforce it. So I'll bring this back to like, this is why there are entire police forces and sheriffs and state troopers. Like, it, it, we're like four cops out of every 10 people in our town. It's so small. We got the city cops, the county cops, and the troopers. Okay. They're enforcing all the rules. It's not like the state was like, don't go above 70. Bye. No, no, they got people out there patrolling all the time telling you not to go around 70. So I'm not saying you got to be like a highway patrolman or like whatever. But you have to realize it's your job to keep the boundaries. So this is human nature to, to do what the self wants. What does the self want? What does your self want? If this is human nature. So this is why when we make boundaries, we have to enforce them. Because if what we want comes at odds with what our kids want, more than likely, they're going to choose what they want. And this is not because they're like a hellion child unlike, this is because they are human. This is what all humans do. And so this is why we have to keep them. We have to, you know, why we have this rule, explain to them, whatever it might be, help find ways that they're able to help, able to make the rule. Maybe they just really want to do the chore in the afternoon and not the morning or whatever, you know, give them chance to feel some power in the situation as it respect to the rule but we have to enforce it and it's just screaming at someone because they didn't respect the boundary doesn't work telling them they should just respect it it doesn't work you actually have to you have to hold the line you have to hold the line you have to put the fence up that says this far and no further it, but with kids obviously we have to create structures that allow them to meet the rules in a help in a happy way we you know we help like so for example my kids can't come out of their room until a certain time so I, I got my son who always wanted to come out an okay to wait clock and when it comes green he comes out that's it it was that easy then he knew what time it was he knew the rule he was able to meet it we're on each other's side we're on the same side so that's what I want to say with the boundary is actually empowering so boundary says you we can't do this 
But anything up to here, I'm, you know, I'm cool with. Let's talk about how we can make this happen. So boundaries are not like mean, mean, horrible mom. And limits are. Limits are just keeping us sane. They're keeping us from needing to go away for a month, you know, um, or two months or whatever because we couldn't cope. This is, there's no shame in that. If you get too far past your limit, you're just in a deficit. You can't do it. So I just encourage you this week to think about your limits. I mean, hey, your limits, you probably already know what they are. If you start thinking about it in terms of that, then they'll probably become self-evident to you. And to really guard your heart, which is the wellspring of life. I love that verse because it's Proverbs, because it's out of our hearts comes, you know, the wellspring of life. And when our heart is like withered and it's past the point and it's in a deficit and it's depleted, we don't have life to give others. And that's what we most want. So, um, I just hope that this encourages you to think about what your limits are and what your boundaries are and to create habits and things that protect them. And then you're just sort of, you're you're okay. You might have a high day, might have a low day, but overall you're just okay. And that's the goal. Till next time.